These ruins are all that's left of the once great Basing House, one of the biggest and grandest houses in Tudor England. It was visited by Henry VIII and Elizabeth I, and most famously was under siege for two years during the Civil War until it was finally destroyed by Cromwell in 1645. But is there more of the great house still waiting to be discovered? Is there any evidence of the battles that took place here? And what happened to the family after the Civil War? Did they, as many local people believe, build another great mansion in that field over there? Time team have got just three days to investigate. What's going on here then, Mick? Victor's doing a reconstruction of Basing House, as we think it might have been. This is, this is based on this super air picture look, which is taken in with a light dusting of snow, so it shows everything up, you know, very, very nicely. Why does it look like a flying saucer? Because there's a Norman ring work underneath all the later buildings. So there was a Norman castle here? Yeah, yeah. But what, what date does this lot start then, Alan? Well, as a Tudor building, in the early 1530s, it was the property then of, of the first Marquess of Winchester, and he started to redevelop the old house. That's in the, the Norman ring work there, um, but hadn't got very far with that and realised this was going to be far too small for his, his political ambitions. He needed right. a big place to entertain, yeah. so he started on the new house, which is to the, to the east of the old house, and this was a massive construction. According to tradition, because we can't prove it now, had 360 rooms in that one building alone, and it was big enough to entertain the biggest royal progress as you could get then. The last time, for instance, Queen Elizabeth visited the house in 1601, she came down with a following of 1,500 people, God. stopped for two weeks, and then halfway through the first week, so much enjoying her visit, she invited down the new French ambassador, who <laughs> brought another 420 Frenchmen with him, all to be entertained and fed. Yeah. So this is called the old house? That's the old house. That's the new, new house, house. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's here. So where are we going to dig? Well, we're going to dig up in this area here. Uh, this, this rather gives the impression that we know what it's like, but this is you know, based on, on what we think was there and earlier prospects like this one, which you know, show a certain a number of ruined buildings, but somewhere in that area there, which is where geophysics are over the back there. Come and have a look. The strip of land we plan to investigate is in an area where part of Basing New House has been largely destroyed by the Basingstoke Canal, which was cut through here in 1788 and filled in again around 1970. But there are bits of brickwork to be seen here. With a, a slight clue, you might spot it. Oh, blimey. But <laughs> 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 right. we've got a short length of wall. I, I think it's possible the edge of the canal is somewhere here. It's a bit confused because we've got an old trackway. It could be that this narrow strip of ground may have escaped any damage from the canal builders. And Alan's excited at the possibility that there could be undisturbed archaeology here relating to the actual day when Cromwell captured Basing House in 1645. From what we can make out, the attack came in from this side yeah. and they breached the outer walls, which are over there, and this was the first real line of defence during the final attack. So they would have had to get up through the building that would have stood here and onto that level to get to the defence. So this is a crucial spot it in is. the actual this is siege the, story. Yeah, this is in the final, the 14th of October, 6 o'clock in the morning. This is where they came through in this direction. So, so it's well, a, are we going to put in some trenches I here? Think, I think we need a are. trench to look at these out. two big foundations because if th this building ought to have massive foundations, yeah. doesn't mm. it? Uh, so I where do you think we might put in a trench? I think along here. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think Straight there's any question through. about it. Yeah. Do you want us to mark it, or can you see those? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you Cheeky go. Devil. <laughs> Cheeky devil. Basing House is a scheduled ancient monument, but this strip of land is currently outside the protected area. But the scheduling may have to be extended if we do find some undisturbed archaeology, revealing details of the destruction of Basing New House. In addition to digging here, we've also been asked to investigate this field in search of the mansion built by the same family after the Civil War. This is a field that has never been excavated before. The locals reckon there's a huge post-Civil War mansion 
on the other side of this wall, don't they? Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense, look, because we've got the gates in the wall. There's one down there, and there's these two gate pillars here. Well, Going into an empty field now. They don't look particularly wide to me. No, but they would be OK for horses and the little carriages they had there. And we're not looking at some huge, great, you know, entrance. You don't need that. But if this was the big gates to a mansion, yeah. and then it's been bricked off afterwards, yeah. why are the bricks here the same as the bricks on the other side well, here? Well, it suggests it wasn't in use very long, doesn't it? You know, if, they, if it had an opening and then the same style of bricks are put back in, it's probably not in use very long. Here's the other one, look. Yeah. In terms of geophysics, we're off to a flying start, because this field was surveyed a year ago as part of another project. These are the resistance results, and the blue are showing wall foundations, building rubble, maybe bricks or, or whatever. Oh, yeah. And we believed that that mm. could actually be uh, the mansion house there. It's extraordinary, because when I look at it, fresh it's this that looks like a building to me yeah it does doesn't it? initially that looks like a range but that's several hundred meters it's a question of scale it that's going right across there it's probably gardens, gardens wasn't yeah. it? i mean this is our actual interpretation that we, we did that could be the house the gardens as krenz had described a possible lane coming down this side going to that gateway with a gateway on this side the sickening thing is that the, the historical evidence is pretty slim for this. We've got an account in 1798 by a chap called Moses Legg, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful name, um, and he's looking back and saying that after the original house was destroyed, in other words, over the other side mm. of the road, a mansion was built on the north side of the road, where we are, opposite the ruins, and the piers of the fine jointed brickwork were the entrance to the mansion, which you know, you've already yeah. seen, which was pulled down 50 or 60 years ago. So we're talking 1740-ish by the then Duke and the materials carried to cannons near Kingsclear. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no definite evidence, but they seem to think that the house would have been built in 16, around about 1690, mm -hmm. which would give you, you know, a kind of <laughs> a house shelf life of something like 50 years. The mansion is thought to have been built in the 1690s, but the only sure way we're going to find out if it was here is to start digging. What we do know is that it was built by Charles Paulette, the sixth Marquis of Winchester, and that the mansion would have been tiny compared with the massive Tudor house built by the first Marquis, William Paulette. Fortunately, we've got some original documents to tell us about the Tudor house. This is a f fascinating newsletter of 1645, and this chap, Hugh Peters, describes the house at the time of the Civil War. He talks about the old house had stood, as it is reported, two or three hundred years, a nest of idolatry, the new house surpassing that in beauty and stateliness, and either of them fit to make an emperor's court. So he obviously considered it to be one of the biggest houses in England. It was certainly very big, but of course it was also very, very widely dispersed. If you look at this, I think probably the total circumference of that covers something, something like about 10 acres, I'd mm -hmm. have thought. Now, in comparison, Hampton Court, which we consider to be very big, covers about six. So right. it's bigger than Hampton Court, but it's certainly smaller than Windsor Castle, for instance, which um, is really considerably larger. So it is a very, very large house for a private individual. Crikey, Phil, this has moved on a lot since this morning. Oh, you've left us to get on with it, Well, mate. we did. I think the idea was to give you plenty of time to get into it. Incredible you know, so. results, incredible it's results. Fantastic, yeah. We've actually got undisturbed archaeology right the way across. Oh, really? Look, and so far, no sign of the canal. Just more archaeology surviving than we dared hope for. In where Jenny is, we've got the internal corner of a, of a wall. Yeah. You see, they're beautifully mortared up, yeah. plastered. Still with a plaster on the wall. Yep. <laughs> We've got exciting finds too. Our first yeah. contact with the Civil War. So, what's, what are these? They musket balls on the island? No, I, I think they're pistol balls. And, and this one's quite interesting because it's an impacted one. It's actually hit something, something hard. <laughs> like armour? Might be armour, <laughs> might be a brick wall, might actually oh, right, be a so, human being. So that, so that would have looked like this originally? Yeah, perfect little sphere like that with a, a little blip on the top, which is the mould mark where it was poured. Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing of course, is that 
cavalry usually had the pistols, and that ties in quite well what we know about siege tactics at the time. Usually when a final storm happened, because the infantry had been doing all the digging outside and the yeah. hard work, they usually requested that the cavalry should lead the attack on foot because they'd been swanning about in the surrounding <laughs> country. Right, yeah. So the cavalry, who also were fairly heavily armoured with buff coats and back and breast yeah. and pistols and grenades, would lead the spearhead the attack. We don't know whether that happened here, but it certainly happened in other places. So that might be actual evidence of the, of the attacking spearhead going in. That's amazing. It is amazing, because we're revealing a bit of Basing Newhouse that was thought to have been lost. But now, time to find out how we're doing with our search for the missing mansion in the field across the road. Well, basically, we're in the middle of a destruction lair, we think, here. We've, um, the moment we're just cleaning back onto this feature here, if it is a feature, it's all these white lumps, that's chalk. Yeah. Um, we think it's maybe a wall. We've not got that sort of stuff up there, but it doesn't seem like a mansion wall. You don't build big mansions out of chalk. chalk it seems more like a garden wall. Yeah. But we're not sure. It may just be rubble. But it's certainly destruction there, and it's all looking very 17th, 18th century. Right. Finds are fantastic. We've got... Um, oh, crikey, look at that really cluster. really nice sort of yeah. roof tile out with the holes in for the nails. Um, window glass as well. Oh, right, um, yeah. Which, so although the chalk wall doesn't look very much like a mansion, clearly the window glass is coming from yeah, a very big yeah. house. And loads of clay pipe bits. Oh, God, you haven't seen the half of it. Look oh, this lot. Like, they must have smoked glass. themselves to death. The nicest bit, though, I think, is this, that little knife handle. Oh, that's nice. Isn't, isn't that beautiful? Sort of copper alloy or bronze or something. I think so. It's quite shiny. If you look, you yeah. can see there's the remains of the blade in there. Yeah. You got something else? Yeah, Carenza, to go with your window glass. Oh, that's oh, nice. Some lead. Oh, lead fantastic. Came. Yeah. It was the name oh, yeah. of their little... We've had so much of this glass, it's about time we found some mm. of that, isn't it? So lots of good high-status finds, but nothing to locate the mansion as yet. But we've taken a big step forward this afternoon, thanks to archivist Caroline Edwards, who's arrived with two maps which actually show a mansion house in Grange Field. Um, and this presumably is the, the uh, area of Old Basing House? That's right, yes. And across the road we have the, um, the later mansion. The maps are in a style which suggests that they were drawn around 1730, and as far as we know, they contain the only pictures of the mansion in existence. On map the first here, we have um, a much more detailed um, depiction oh, of a that's house. That's much here. better. Isn't it, it is, isn't it? Much because better. Lovely. there's presumably the, the, the two gates mm -hmm. at the front. That's right. You must have a look at those, Simon. Um, and here's the house itself. And presumably the barn here and Grange Farm. Mm -hmm. what, what's also very nice about this map is, is that rather charming early 18th century convention whereby they show houses in elevation rather than in plan and it gives us our first hint of what this house might have looked like. Our surveyor Stuart has been studying the new map evidence and has an idea that the surviving gate piers can help us in our quest to find the mansion. Simon, I'm, I'm interested in your opinion on these gateways because I think they might give us a clue to the location of the house. Are they the right period, 1690-ish? They're beautiful, first of all. And the, these joints are just sensational. Just look how tight they are. I mean, when this was built, this was a very, very high quality gateway. Um, and yes, I mean, this, this looks really spot on. You know, it's pure 1690. Come and look at this, this other gateway. because so although they're the same, they look the same, they're different. Oh, come, come and look at this, you can see immediately the gate's smaller, but also look at the... It's fantastic. Gate. This is really beautiful and really special, and in fact you can forget the other gateway now. <laughs> Why do you say that? Why is this more special? Well, just look at the craftsmanship in it, the expense and the quality. This, take this brick here, this is one brick, starts here, ends here. All of this bit of the brick has had to be carved and rubbed and chopped away in, able, in order to create this beautiful moulding here. They're all done on the workbench. They're then reassembled on site to make a work of art in brick. And that's what we've got here. How does that tie in with what you were thinking? I think it's wonderful. Good kissing. No, I <laughs> prefer if you didn't. <laughs> that fits in exactly with, with what this plan that's emerging about the site of the house. If you look at this plan, which is 1730-ish, this thing, is a large building, probably a stable block, which implies this large gate is for horses, carriages in That's here. That's the first gate we saw. The first gate coming out into an open courtyard. This gate is this one here. The high quality one. The high quality one, which is directly opposite the front of the house. Hang on, then that means that the house is over here, which is about 10 yards away from where we've been digging for it. Yeah, True. absolutely. <laughs> so I want, I want a trench over there. 
And so as we approach the end of day one... Tony, it's Mick. Nothing's going on your end. Oh, very good. The tanks have got a lot more potential than we thought. That's great. Listen, Stuart's got this new theory about what might have been happening in this field, and Simon kind of agrees with him. And I'll give you one clue. If we want to find the mansion in this field, we think we're probably digging in the wrong place. Oh, great. Well, that's happened before, hasn't it? See you later. Beginning of day two, and yesterday we found a big clue in this wall. This is a gateway, but it's not just any old gateway, it's a really high status one. And it seems to indicate that the old mansion that we were looking for isn't over here where we were originally digging, but will be lined up with the gateway. So the big task today is get down there and see what's underneath the field. Our new trench it's been decided will take in a geophys target and the area Stuart wants to dig. It's also going to be bigger than was actually agreed. They'll never measure it. The map evidence suggests the mansion should be here. And according to Stuart, this trench will also cut across some slight lumps and bumps which he's noticed. Well, look at this. Bernard was wandering around with a GPS set, picking up all the, the bumps and lumps in the field. What the GPS set has picked up is a series of rectilinear earthworks here, which is where we were standing, and also, quite interestingly, a series of linear earthworks going off that way, which I think might be perhaps a, an earlier range of buildings or something. What is clear from the earthwork survey and the geophys plot is that this field has been the site of continual building activity over the years. Our first two trenches, in fact, have turned up lots of building rubble, mostly made up of Tudor bricks. It's likely that these came from buildings that were part of the huge Basing House estate, buildings that may have still been standing at the time of the Civil War in the 1640s. As a reminder of what was happening around Basing House, we've asked the English Civil War Society to set up a siege camp outside the Great Barn, which we know was used by Cromwell's troops during the war. Meanwhile, across the road in our excavation at Basing House... This is undoubtedly a surface. Yeah, it looks like there might be some... We've had... We've, look, and there's oyster, bits of oyster, old clay pipe, look. Oh, what a gem! Look at that! It's one of them little tiny ones. That's early, isn't it? Yeah. That's got to be, what, yeah. 17th, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know whether it's not some sort of a floor. We've got very, very strong chalk. Look at that. That's, look at that. Listen to that. That is solid chalk. And then we've got the wall, I think the wall is actually dying out at about that level. Right. But the most important thing is that everything above it is demolition rubble. And we've had virtually no finds in the demolition rubble at all. Yeah. We just come down onto this surface, and well, you see, you've got a handful of finds. Yep. Oh, look at this. Oh, hey! Look at this. Oh, it's not a bellamine, is it? This is sort of like a leaf pattern, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's... With the with little veins run down on either side. There's another one there. Isn't that... That's really delicate, isn't it's it? Smart it's stuff, yeah. isn't it, eh? That should be datable, shouldn't it? Oh, easy. To find out how much more archaeology survives here, we're going to widen this trench further still. The current thinking is that we're digging the remains of this gatehouse, which was very significant in the story of the siege, because this is where Cromwell's troops, having destroyed the outer courtyard, broke through into Basing House. The whole site looks very different today, but some of the huge earthwork defences are still very visible. You've got to imagine something like a First World War battlefield here, with mud, pitfalls, stakes driven to the ground, shattered buildings, no trees whatsoever. Um, the defenders on the inside here, there would have been cattle kept on the hoof inside, out there across the common, open space, trench lines gradually edging their way towards the, the, the defenders here, but only usually in the summer months. Right. In the winter months, the armies couldn't be uh, provisioned. I mean, all sorts of things were tried against this house. I mean, it wasn't just cannon fire that this was protecting from. They did actually try a poison gas attack on the house oh, in 1640. <laughs> well, as far as we can work out, they burnt wet straw mixed with brimstone and arsenic. But like most gas attacks, I think the wind changed <laughs> and it blew in the wrong direction. But how they projected it in here, I don't they know. They just let it blow in yeah. by the wind, yes. they, rather Presumably. than sort of projectiles. Yeah. I, never, I never knew that. It's quite well, I think it's the first recorded gas attack in British military history. It gets more like the First more World, more World War every like day, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It hasn't changed a great deal, hasn't it? Back across the road, we haven't found the mansion as yet, but we are building up a collection of finds. In terms of dates, we're looking at the... Uh, 
late 17th going on in the 18th century and there certainly is slight some prestige pieces i mean we have this right. really what, nice what's what like this mm, what's now this is uh tinglaze ware bowl or That's sometimes known as delftware it's probably made in london in about 1740s 1750s oh, right. Mm. Right. we thought that was a really nice mm. piece when it came out yeah, certainly it is a very yeah. nice piece and Helping us today with the puzzle of the missing mansion is John Heward, an architectural historian, who can tell us more about the kind of building we're looking for. Um, uh, Victor's producing a drawing based on the map, showing the kind of house that you would have found on the site, um, a fairly typical house of, a, of, of an affluent landowner. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is it doesn't seem to be the kind of house built for Duke. <laughs> and it doesn't look like the principal residence of a great family. Oh, I see. So, in some effect, you're saying it might be the equivalent of a weekend cottage from a, from a main residence. <laughs> An analogy <laughs> term, yes, but a slightly, slightly, um, slightly different status. The, the family had many properties, mm. um, particularly Charles spent a lot of his time hunting and using houses as a basis for, for hunting. Mm. Um, he had a lodge in the New Forest, he had several houses close by. He maybe didn't want a grand house. And it may not have been the main residence, but even so, this is a very substantial building. But has it been completely Hello. robbed away? Hello. We've got a floor here, I think. Brilliant. Oh, oh crikey, look at that. There. Ooh. there we are. Lovely cobbled floor. And what's it, it's putting over a lot of demolition debris, is it? And that would fit with these sort of chalk walls we keep getting appearing yeah. here, there and everywhere. So maybe we've got some sort of farmyard that's much later than the William and Mary stuff. But the wall is uh, over here, look. You see, this is the first in situ remains we've had at all. These are actually mortared in here. All the rest of the rubble we've had, it's just been loose. Well, this uh, lines up amazingly well with Stuart's doorway, doesn't it? Yeah. Marvelous. It's just about this side. What we don't seem to have is anything commensurate this side of it. John, what does this wall look like to you? It's very difficult to relate it to that 18th century plan. Mm. But the 18th century view looks very tight. I mean, is it possible that there's another wall? The, the two side wings of the house break forward slightly. Is it possible that you're just seeing the, the corner of the house here? John's suggesting that we might have uncovered just this bit of the mansion. In which case, we should widen this trench to see if the wall turns in this direction. There are other suggestions for trenches. John, for instance, wants to put in another trench to find out more about the back extension to the house that's shown clearly on the 1730s map. What you'd expect to find in a William & Mary house is a simple square block. And that range at the back does look as if it belongs to something earlier to which that house has been added. Right. So actually that back range is quite crucial. Ah! Meanwhile, Phil's taking a break from digging at Basing House. Oh, yes! Look at this. A it, bell it, jar. A, ah! But... Look what we found in the trench earlier this morning. Here's what I, I found earlier. Thought that I look. Oh, that's perfect, isn't it? Isn't that something else, eh? Look at that. Yes, yeah, the seal. That's exactly the same rosette, isn't it? It is. There's the leaf around there, and the relief on there. And, and the look, same colour. There as well. you go. And he look. He could be just cardinal. below where the cardinal is. <laughs> and the glaze, perfect. It's lovely. Wonder what they got in the here. replica jar looks so good, it's hard to believe it's not 250 years old, like the bit we've found. But Phil's real reason for coming here is to see the reenactors making musket balls. Really good. Well, we found we found two of them up on trench one. Yeah. Alan reckoned they were uh, pistol shot. Oh, they'd be the small ones. Here. That's it. They're definitely like that. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, it was, and they got the little nipple on the end as well. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, were they actually making them on site? Oh, yes, they, they would have done this uh, normal activity. Well, I damned. That's a musket ball, that one. That's a musket? <laughs> well, we haven't had anything as big as that. <laughs> I'll show you how I do it, if you like. Yes. yes. Right. To get the muck off the top of the lead. We know that they were doing it during the siege of Basing House because from the accounts, once the Roundheads had captured Basing Church, they used the lead coffins of the long-dead Marquises in the family vault to make pistol and musket balls before firing them back at the poor old Marquis in the house itself. Oh, that's a pretty hard <laughs> look, isn't it? I mean... <laughs> Not only that, they, used to, they kept any of the royalist prisoners that they took from the castle in that same family vault amidst the same old Marquis's bones. That's really <laughs> adding salt to the wound. It, it, it really is. <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely fascinating. I mean, could we have one that would have been, been shot and would just been splattered against a wall or something like that? And yeah. we just flattened oh, yeah. right up. Yeah, these are just very soft lead. Um, they hit anything when they've been fired, they were just mushroom. Is that an edge you found? 
Oh, you think it looks like it is actually it's shining. Very neat, isn't it? Beautiful brickwork running along yeah. there, and, and then it here. and then it turns along. It's, it's not robbed out. No, that is an it. edge. This this great big arch and, and foundation here. I mean, it's, it's built to do a huge job, isn't it? It is and built to take something very heavy on top of it. And yet we've got nice brickwork here, all plastered up. Sure. So so we're actually still within the building. Sure. So maybe a cellar, undercroft, or something like that. Could be. I mean, if this is a gatehouse, I mean, it could be a, a porter's lodge or something like that, perhaps. We see, yeah, this forms part of a wall which carries on up here. See, if you come on up here. Hopefully, we may still find evidence of how this building was damaged during the Civil War. And, you know, there really is no doubt about that. That's certainly one of the things that this trench has proved, I think. What can we learn? Simon believes he may be able to identify another bit of Basing Newhouse. And it might be possible if we try and compare the bricks in this structure that we know are part of the new house with this building over here, which is, which is, is, is now the site of someone's cottage. And they think they've got in it some of the same brickwork as we've got here. In other words, they think their house is built on a bit of the, of the new house. And where's that? Just over there. Hi, Sharon. Hi. This is Tony. Hi. Hello there. Hello. And we've come to see your brick wall. Right, would you like to follow me? Yeah. Go around the side. You think it's old? I hope it's old, Tony. I'll be very disappointed if it's not. Well, I'm warning you, Simon is the biggest sceptic possible, so your hopes might be completely dashed. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> Where is it? Just in here, into the corner. This one over here? Yeah, just over here. Simon. We right. Hope, we hope that this is the part that's really old. We hope this is about 1560s, 1530s. We are pretty sure that this is somewhat later, sort of 17th century, and there was sort of an addition to it. We have the arguments over here. So if this brick <laughs> is the same size as that brick there, they ought to be about the same age. Oh, OK, so. let's see. Same size? Exactly. Perfect match. Brilliant, you've got an old wall. <laughs> well, no, hold on just yeah. a minute. It is possible that the bricks may be reused, so what we need to look for here is some of the original pointing. Aha. Uh -huh. And that's precisely what we've got over here. In, in, in fact, this is really quite exciting. Look, this pointing here is what we call double struck. It only happens in the 16th century. What does it mean, double struck? Well, if you look very closely at that edge there, you'll see that the, the pointing in between the bricks isn't flat. It's done to a little point like this, which means it's double struck. One, two. Can you see? Yeah, yeah, Along absolutely. Along there? Yeah. And yeah. that is a sure sign that these bricks are in their original position. In other words, they are of the same date as the gatehouse that we're excavating in Trench 1. So it is old. Great. You're all right. I'm very willing to hear it. So, presumably, that means that that wall is the back wall of that. We're nearly at the end of the day, and for some of us, it's turned out to be even more challenging than usual. Charge your pikes to the rear. Now, if you could do this, you're a professional. <laughs> Watch carefully. First motion, lift it up above your head like so. Good. Like now the next one, you're going to throw it slightly over your head and catch the butt in your right hand by twisting your body. Watch me and see if you can do it. Like that. Go on. Good. Well done. And now charge it like so. Good. Now turn your fist the other way around. That way. That's the way. What's it? Is this for Good. the? Is this for the uh, dirty devil who attacks you from the rear? Is exactly. It? Well, once we've done this, we have to go back. Oh. Recover <laughs> and shoulder your pike. Now slide your left arm down the shaft of the, the pike like so. Like that? Yes. Now you're going to lift it back over your head and turn your body to face the way you were before. Right. See if you can do this without watching me, because you've got your back to me. <laughs> go. <Hup>. No. no. <laughs> the sun's beginning to go. But there's still time for a progress report on our search for the missing mansion in the field next door. Just before lunch, the archaeologists said they were going to extend that trench, which they've done. They might extend the trenches that way, which they haven't done. And they were definitely going to dig a trench here, which they haven't done. But whatever happened, they weren't going to dig a trench here, which, as you can see, they're doing. Carenza! You were one of the people who said, whatever happened, we wouldn't have a trench here. Well, yeah, unfortunately, archaeology isn't that predictable. When we had that meeting earlier, we were fairly confident that we'd got the front of the William and Mary house in that trench four over there. We thought we'd widen the trench, that we'd find the range, the front of the range, dog-legging round, we'd get the front facade. 
We widened the trench and the wall didn't turn. It's carried on going back. We're not at all confident we've got the front of the house. We're thinking it may in fact be the back of the house. So we're putting this trench in here to try and find the front. So we've still got lots to do here. And no doubt about it, solving the puzzle of the missing mansion is going to be our main goal tomorrow. Beginning of day three, and we're still on the lookout for this mansion. We know now that it should be somewhere over there. And as you can see, we're putting a lot of trenches in and we're coming up with a lot of walls, but we don't actually know how they fit in with the shape of the house. But whatever happens, we've got just one day left. So we either work it out today or we don't work it out at all. The difficulty is that there have been so many buildings in this field over the years that it's incredibly complicated to sort out one from the other. To make matters worse, geophys are detecting some walls but not others. I think the walls are just too slight for us to be able to see them. All the brick rubble, it's just so much stronger. Warren Carranza. We need all the help we can get, and Phil's been drafted in to try and make some sense of the walls we have found. Well, we'll have to get it planned, we'll have to get it photographed, and then I think we, we start, certainly, along that edge, going down. We're also opening up another trench here to try and pick up evidence of the back part of the mansion, which the map suggests may have been an older Tudor building. Almost immediately, Carenza thinks she's found some brickwork. Oh, crikey, yes. Well, it's got good, a wall it? here. Um, do you want to get a hat? Uh, yeah. That's, uh... Have you got the other side of it? Uh, well, it's a slightly odd angle. Well, it's actually, said it's, it's actually OK for the earlier alignments that are all a bit drifting off like that. Right, I mean, OK, well, that's, okay. that's good then. It's looking... It's encouraging that it's wider, isn't it? Let's have a look, see. Oh, I think that's very no, encouraging. I oh, here's the other side. Oh, oh, brilliant. Look at that. That's great. Look at that. Good. So that's, that's the rubble core in the middle, and that's yeah. The... I mean, that's not a garden wall. That's a nice, de decent yes. foundation, isn't it? It is, isn't it? The reenactors are still with us in the siege camp next door, and at Basing House, we're starting to find clear evidence of the attack on the gatehouse during the Civil War. That's a massive amount of burning. It really looks like the whole roof has come crashing down in here. There's no scorching on the walls around here, but if you look where Mick's digging now, you can see a stain yeah. on the wall where the level of ash has come up to. Then look, look down on the floor, look what we've got here. Lots of smashed oh, yeah. roof tile. You can tell that with, with, the, with the, the, the peg hole there, yeah? And yeah. It, it's, it's been broken and burnt. It's not because it's been in the kiln and got blackened. It's, it's actually scorched by the roof timbers blazing yes. away. Yeah. Down here, I've actually got a piece of window glass, which is coming out of the burning deposit. Amazing. Some of these are, are decorated. I don't know whether that piece is. It, uh, no, it's just a, a discoloured piece discolored. of plain glass, a quarry. It's the corner box, the, the, the part of the diamond shape that would have made the typical Tudor window. Back across the road, I'm doing my best to keep up with changing ideas about the location of the mansion. John, yesterday we had this great theory that the front gates of the mansion were there, and that if we went to here, we would find the front of the mansion. And we dug down, and we found this wall, and we found a return, and we all went, yes, we've got the front of the mansion. <laughs> Where is it? I think the, the mansion is probably here, slightly further forward. We took some measurements this morning, and we measured across the front wall. And in fact, it's only 18 metres side to side. What oh. is? The, the forecourt is, is 18 metres across. How do we across. know that? We've got a scar of the, the wall between the forecourt and the well, service that, courtyard. That's that one there. That's the one there between yeah. the gate piers. We've got the central gate pier. Yeah. So measuring from the scar to the gate and flipping it over, we get the full width of the forecourt. Right. So we've got that, that measurement very, very clearly fixed. And we know that the house filled the forecourt. So are you saying if that's 18 metres across there that you've then worked out the distance back from that. It is actually quite difficult to work out the distance back. We've got that fixed. But in fact, um, we've still got the incident room and the barn here surviving. Right. Um, and you can see that the whole of the house, the, the forecourt, the house itself and the back range, were within the distance from the, the road to the barn. Right. 
And you're prepared to trust that little old sketch? Absolutely, completely. You, 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 <laughs> you, the, the, the surveyor was concerned with recording the whole of the estate for the family. Um, he, this, this, this drawing is only the size of a postage stamp, the actual bit of the house, but it's still a good representation of the building. So uh, how are we going to find... I, I was, was going to say, I can, I can see the way this conversation's going. <laughs> it's gone there. <laughs> it's already gone there. Yeah. What you're going to want is these two trenches linked up because that's a kroner going across the house, and possibly that one over there to pick up a wall. So he extend that through to there? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you... There's a wall in here already. I think that's a... a, a, a garden feature, a later oh, right. feature. So it's, nothing, right. no, it's very narrow, that isn't it? It's very, it's very narrow. <laughs> Although the focus has been on the new trenches, work has still been going on in Trench 3. The last I heard, it was full of Tudor bricks. But what's the story now? Well, what we've got, we've got a lovely buried soil at that far end, from which we've got medieval pottery sheds, and it's uh, a garden soil, but then there's a very distinct cut, and then it just dives away, and all the material we've been taken out from the, the main feature there, is uh, brick rubble, and from the rubble we're getting some nice clay pipes um, with uh, stamps on, so we can actually date them, uh, because we know that Edward Dodd was a clay pipe maker in Boulder in the New Forest. Uh, he was busy between 1710 and 1730. This trench, in fact, has turned out to be very important. This big ditch feature is probably an open garden moat, quite a fancy garden moat going round here, which in all probability is open from the Tudor period onwards. We can actually see it on this survey we've been using. And that would go with this old Tudor house. And at the later date, the mansion is added to it. And all the destruction rubble from the two houses has gone in and they've used this as a kind of a landfill site. And those clay pipes, the dates they give are probably the clay pipes of the people who are knocking the house down. This is a lovely, it's a lovely trench because it tells us... So it's like builder's fag ends? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> so we found the end of the story. We've got the beginning over there in Old Basing. We've just got uh, half a day left to get the middle of the story together. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Basing House, we're attempting to make sense of the archaeology we've discovered associated with the gatehouse. The other thing that's of interest coming up now, of course, in the far corner, a lot of evidence of burning. It looks very much as if that's part of the building that went up in flames, and, and this great brick tower actually acted as a, as a fire break. And yeah. it was just getting light as well when the attack came through. So Just getting imagine, light? Yeah, so it would what have been the roof burning? burning as well. People were screaming. Yeah. Out. And one of the burning. contemporary reports actually say a fireball fell in the roof and everybody was too busy fighting to quench it. And yeah, it gradually yeah. took hold and caught fire. Phil! What you got? Looks like we got the crossbow, Tony. Excellent. Look at that. And it's really, really very impressive. It's very, very sound. Oh, that's good news, isn't it? <laughs> Now, do we know that this could be the cross wall of the house that we're looking for? Well, not yet, I think, probably. <laughs> we're still speculating. It might possibly just be a buttress propping we'll, up the we'll wall. We'll definitely have to take that block out to, to establish that. And, in fact, we'll have to box out on this side, too, to see whether we can get the rest of this chalk coming through here. Do we, we don't have any finds to date the cross wall, but Phil's noticed it's different to the other walls in this trench. This is very substantial build. And looking back down the line of the wall there, the wall down there is very, very wobbly. Look at the difference in the build. It's got a lot of flints in it, whereas the wall here, there's no flint in it at all. This is quite a deep wall. It's but is well it wide built. enough to be able to, to be the outside wall of a, a big two-storey house? I don't know about that, but, but I do think that we may not be looking at the same wall. There could be phasing in it and that we've got an earlier wall down there, cruder, rougher built with bricks in it and flints in it and then some of it is tagged on to this end. So this could actually be the join between the new William and Mary house and the old Tudor one? It'd be great to think so, wouldn't it, eh? <laughs> so at last we found some substantial brickwork which could be part of the mansion. But we don't know for sure until we widen the trench to see more of it. Although we can't yet prove the precise location of the mansion, we can build up a pretty good idea of what it looked like from the map evidence and other buildings of the period. You see that Belton House has got that cupola 
on the top. And presumably they used that as a promenade. There's no evidence here at the moment that they had that kind of roof walk. We're also working on a reconstruction of one of the gateways, transforming it to how it would have looked in the early 1700s. But what we really want to do is to find the precise location of it in the ground, and this is proving difficult. Joining up these two trenches hasn't revealed any evidence of the mansion house, and John has reverted to his original idea that the substantial bit of wall we found in Trench 4 is actually this corner of the front of the mansion. To try and prove it, we're now going to try and find this matching corner. You're asking me to fit that shape in here. Now, I could do that. Geophys are still struggling to see any walls of the mansion. You might have a return coming down that line, but I, I can't see an indentation or anything. I mean, the real, the real problem is that this, this width of the, the courtyard is pretty tight anyway. We're talking about quite a substantial house, and we've only got 18 metres between the two walls. I mean, basically what seems to be happening is that the archaeology is showing there are walls down here, and it's also showing there's lots of robin, and the image is so confusing yes. of the bits that are there and the bits that are not there. To try and interpret it, bits can be interpreted, but to try and interpret the whole from this is just exceptionally difficult, isn't it, John? Phil? What? Phil, rumour has it that you just said ooh-ah, which what? normally well, I means... always say ooh -ah. I know, but it's normally when you found something. No, hey. no, look at that. Hey. We're hoping that what we've found is this corner on the front of the mansion. It's looking as though it matches up exactly on our alignment through there. I mean, what I'm desperate to know is, does it turn away from you or turn into us, uh, Carenza? And What's trench? those big old bricks over there? Well, I don't know yet. We're ah, only well, just clearing look. onto have it. A... All right, Come all on. right. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. We haven't got much time left, but we have to proceed carefully because we don't want to damage what little evidence may remain. But as more of the wall is revealed, Phil and Carenza become less sure that what we've found is what we're looking for. Well, what we seem to have got is two walls running parallel down from the gates and then turning like that. I think those walls running down from the gates have something to do with the forecourt. Um, it looks on the geophysics now as if there may have been a pathway across. Right. But this left is to right. Quite wide and, then, here. and then uh, walls or pathways down to the front of the house. But you seem to have at least had this corner of the house. A lot of the evidence has been robbed away, but we do have the remains of two garden walls which line up with the gateway and, according to John, join up with the front of the mansion. John, you're saying that's part of the courtyard um, and this is the wall that's part of the house and it probably goes under there. No, it doesn't. No way. No, no, I'm not saying you think it is. I'm saying that's I, I, no, Well, John look, <laughs> archaeologically, look, archaeologically, you've got clay there, mm -hmm. you've got rob in there, you can see it's robbed, you can see it's robbed there. You can see where this wall has been bonded in. Look how jagged that thing. That wall's bound to come, come along and do that. So I John, swear how do you it can't go? come so John, how do you, you feel about that? Half past four, day three, <laughs> and we still have absolutely no idea which way these walls go. We've got a couple of hours left. Should we just keep digging and see if we can hopefully have sorted it out by the end of the day. There are lots of visitors to Basing today and they've all been interested to see what life was like in a Civil War siege camp for both men and women. Now of course they want to know about the dig and what we found and we can start by telling them about our discoveries at Basing Newhouse where we've revealed part of a gatehouse that would have looked like this. This grand tower, with wings on either side, was the link between the two courtyards of the new house. The outer courtyard was where visitors like Elizabeth I would have dismounted before walking through this gatehouse and into Basing House. At either side of the gatehouse, we found evidence of storage rooms, one of which had been set on fire, confirming the eyewitness accounts of the storming of Basing House in 1645. But what about progress in this field? Well, the latest news is we're sure we've found the back range of the mansion. We came down onto um, a brick surface, yeah. um, and then dotted in amongst that, you can see the wall foundations that are here. One, two, three of them. Yeah. Um, and so these do relate to that range of buildings that's shown on the plan there. Right. So we found the back, but what about the front of the mansion? I think what you've got is very substantial brick walls. The bricks look as if they date to the 1670s, 1680s. Um, and those brick walls that you've picked up relate exactly to the symmetry of the forecourt. 
And I think that what you seem to have is the foundations, the footings of the house that's depicted here on this map of the 1730s, almost exactly as drawn, at least the wall lines and the alignments. John Gator, by your body language, <laughs> I don't think you're convinced, are you? I think we've got good archaeological evidence in the trenches, we've got good geophysics, we've got good maps. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that the map evidence goes with what we've got in the trenches and the geophysics. So there's something there, but it's not our house, you reckon? No, the, the house is here, but I still don't think we're in exactly the right place. Me? Sorry. Are you going to sit on the fence? No, no, I mean, it's not uncommon to find beautiful evidence from, you know, depictions and documents and so on, and then dig and find it doesn't quite square up. And I don't think this does quite square up. I think we'd have to dig a very large area uh, before we got anything close to the plan. But are you prepared to say that we found the house that we're yeah. looking for? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. because that's 17th that. century material coming out. The finds all fit exactly with Absolutely. the date Absolutely. It just doesn't square up exactly with the plan that we've got. But we have found the mansion. The disagreement is about which bit we've found. And all the team would agree that we've learnt enough to create this computer reconstruction of what it looked like. We do know that it lined up with this gateway and was built of the same fine brickwork. Really, in terms of fixing its position, all we don't know is how far back it stood from the road. Uh, yeah, that looks about right to me. The traditional story that it was dismantled after a fire sometime in the 1750s may well be true because there seems to be so little evidence of the mansion actually in the ground. Certainly we're sure it was positioned here in order to enjoy the view of the ruins of the once great Basing House, which became in effect a garden folly. An interesting, if not sad, end to what had been one of the biggest and most impressive private homes in Tudor England. We move from archaeology to paleontology after the break on Discovery Channel to study the fossilised find that is making a splash in the scientific world. Triassic sea monster is next.